the Japanese or our enemies were armed to the teeth, but we were only armed with our teeth. Gorillas can be a, a great value. They can give you complete insight on what's happening by the enemy. What do you mean by guerrilla? It is a, an, an organization which do not like to surrender to the Japanese. I don't think the guerrillas could have lasted without the civilians for support. What can we do? We have no arms. Yes, we got the Springfields and uh, many infields. We got it from the armories of uh, the schools. Something had created in my heart to fight the enemy. Nakrinip po nila ako, kaya po nagkaroon po ako ng sakit pukot sa akin dibdib. Oh, I'm a guerrilla. Yes, I'm a guerrilla. The amazing thing was that the Filipinos, they didn't turn us in. That's the part that I can't get over. I was already 17. My brother said, you better organize was, and that was women auxiliary service. The gorillas were about as compatible with each other as a bunch of snakes. My mother just gave me a rosary and said, uh, try to be careful. On the night of the night, they told us that the surrender would be on the next morning. And we did not surrender. We went into the mountains and we started forming and organizing guerrilla warfare. The guerrillas will get angry. We are already listed there. We cannot say, we will not continue, we will not proceed. If the Sumalug, Dagidi, Dagidi, Kapo, Another thing that helped me get over the bitterness and the defeat, defeatism, I guess you'd call it, was the, the loyalty and the spirit of the Filipinos. They wanted to fight those damn Japs, and they weren't about to give up their country. If you have not undergone any difficulty, you don't know how to look for work. I noticed Filipinos, when their back is on the wall, that's the time when they become, they work like hell. Those were the days. No, sir, I did not surrender. Manila was, it was absolutely it was a lovely place. It was, the population wasn't uh, high, uh, no traffic problems. It was, it was just the greatest place you can imagine. Or well, I guess we'd all heard of Corregidor and what a great fortress it was and, and how well the Philippines was defended. When we got there, we found out that we had one half-strength division called the Philippine Division. The Philippine Military Academy. We were cadets when the war broke out. Uh, uh, not all of us, but uh, a, a sizable number in the leadership of the Hunters and OTC came from the Philippine Military Academy. The Army was uh, basically not the most combat-worthy Army I've ever seen. The best uh, troops we had were the Philippine Scouts. And they were fine soldiers. They were excellent. They stack up with the, the best of any country. The Philippines at that time was uh, not ready for war. Only the willingness of the people to defend their country was there. They had decided they would create a Philippine army. Well, they started too late. 
was too little, and uh, really it was kind of pathetic. On uh, December the 8th, Far East time, December the 7th, uh, U.S. time, I, I took my battalion out into the field on a training mission, and uh, Captain Van Nost came out, and uh, as I was going out, he says, Clyde, don't go out very far. We're expecting trouble today. And about noon, he came out and he said, uh, uh, Pearl Harbor's been bombed. The United States has declared war on Japan. We're at war. You're to bring your battalion in. Uh, pack up your baggage, feed your troops, and clear this compound and head for Bacola. When the war broke out, I'd been in the Philippines uh, about a year. I was on the flag minesweeper of the USS Bittern, and it was bombed and sunk, well, scuttled uh, the 10th of December when they bombed Cavite Navy Yard. I was preparing to go to school when suddenly we saw already Japanese uh, airplanes bombing uh, Nichols Field. On the day that the war broke out in the Philippines, which was the bombing of uh, Clark Field, I decided to go to Ateneo and found that well, the campus was full of cadets, everybody wanting to join up and go and fight the Japanese. And I think there were a few of us, uh, I can remember Luntok and Gonzalez and Medina, who were as old as 16 or 17 years old. We uh, were pulled down from the trucks and we were not allowed to ride. Private, you want to pass to your body, sir? Private, stop saying. How old are you, son? I'm 21, sir. No, you're only 17. Ang ginawa ko, di tawit, di alista ko, lubi pa ito ko sa kapila, sa kapital ng Pilipino, kasi Amerikano yun eh. At first, all they wanted was just to fight the Japanese, you know, kill as many Japs as possible. And I was then a student uh, in the Sorsogon uh, Trade School, and uh, I have no inkling at all that I'm going to go underground. And my father, uh, happened to be one of the victims when the Japanese bombed the capital, Cavite City. Then something had created in my heart to fight the enemy. My mother just gave me a rosary and said, uh, try to be careful. When the Japanese landed in Davao, that was December 8th, it was preceded by a bomb. It was a sudden uh, occupation of Davao. So we evacuated to the mountains and then organized the resistance movement. I was uh, in the 103rd in Infantry in Tamborna City. I received orders from my commanding officer. I was a platoon commander. I received an order saying that uh, Lieutenant Bishop is safe. Unload all rifles and do not see Jap. I do not shoot Jap, even if you see them. I was a second you, young, <laughs> the adventurous friend of mine who was uh, a, re a recent graduate of the uh, academy. Then asked me to join him in the guerrilla warfare, which I did. For three and a half years, that's what we did. We did pretty good until the war, until the, they finally decided to land, and when they decided to land, we uh, actually surrendered to a very inferior force. They had to, the Japanese had to bring in more people. The white flag is up. Everyone is falling like a baby. Corregidor used to be a nice place. It's haunted now. Get this to my mother. My love to fly. Everybody was surrendering, but I decided I had nothing to surrender in the first place, and even if I did, I wouldn't. So I went up the mountain from Shilai for almost three months. Well, you know, matagal ng gera ko, wala namang pwersa ang kotyo, anong malakas ang hapon. Kami pinasurrender, pinapunta na kami sa Bilanggua, sa Kapas, o Dunel, Tarlac. When the Japanese came over here, of course, there, there were only ten, ten, but they were so scared. The whole town ran to the mountains. 
for their lives. During the early days of the Japanese occupation, I saw women trying to cross the street and by accident there were trucks, Japanese trucks passing by. The trucks stopped and picked up all the women. We never heard anything about them anymore. That's how my hatred for the Japanese started. Ako po'y persahan na kinuha ang mga sundalong hapon at dinala po nila ako sa garrison sa Dasol, Pangasinan. Doon po naglalaba ako, naglilinis, nagluluto sa loob ng dalawang linggo. Tuwing gabi po yan, dalawa ang gantatlong hapon ang nagre sa akin. A cousin of mine, a good friend of one of my sister, was raped by the Japanese, bayoneted to death. To evacuate, you mean to evacuate? Well, it's just lifting up your belongings which you think were important to you and carry it to you and get the heck to the hills. We went out from this house to the mountain. We were scattered. Some sisters were living in Monterico and some in Sinara. It wasn't too long after that that we heard that MacArthur was going to go to uh, get away from Corregidor and go south and that we were supposed to take him. Uh, I was on one of the boats that took off from Corregidor and that's how I got off Corregidor. We were finally surrendered in May and uh, surrendered down to the Japanese. Romulo, yes, because he did, he did some of the commentaries and so on. But Norman Reyes was the regular announcer, the routine announcer. But he was the one who made the farewell speech uh, at the surrender. Well, the Japs were certainly pros. They had fought in China, and they were dang fine troops. Our troops, well, other than the Philippine scouts, or the American troops that were there, were, were really just, uh, weren't even trained. We, of course, received these releases. They were dropping to surrender, you know, and, and we thought about it and thought about it, and then, well, uh, we didn't think very much of surrender, you know. And Rukito was already on the lap of the Japanese commander. He asked Rukito, where is Governor Abram? Then Rukito answered, I am Governor Abram. He pointed his uh, body. I am Governor Abram, said, and all of us laughed, especially the, the commander who hold him. My father left me a 32 caliber Colt pistol and instructed me how to use it and said that uh, we should not be captured alive. I know for a fact that it, in just one patrol in Northern Leyte, Calubi and San Isidro to Villaba, the Japanese captured 30 civilians and all were killed. Just one patrol. If you had uh, 30 Japanese patrols, all over Leyte, then you can just imagine the number of casualties. But these are, these are not reported. Eh, marami po ang hapon dito sa Baler daw noon. Namakay ka nila yung matanda. Ginapos. Kanila nang ginapos. Hinayabat nila ng mga barita sa parte ng katawan. Ay, di ang ginawa raw niya. Sabi raw niya, pag hindi lang ito ang pinalo ninyo, ay hindi ang mamamatay. O, ay, di ito po ang pinalo nila. Nahulog na siya sa butas, tinabunan na lang nila yun. But when I saw the atrocities of the Japanese, I decided to go underground. So I joined the guerrilla forces of the Scudero unit in Sosugon. What I did was, about in the afternoon, I got one of my sergeants and we escaped. We went and get a banca and we sailed for three days far away. I did not surrender to the Japanese. Really, it was no fun being in a losing army. Let me tell you, that that's kind of a... <laughs> really ruins your morale. At the, I guess we were the largest American force that ever surrendered. Major Well, sabi niya, mga bata, kung mga sabi kang ilis, we better surrender. Uh, it's better to be a living coward than a dead hero. Never mind. 
you will also be a hero. Let us disperse, and let us surrender. And as we we're sitting there drinking coffee, this uh, one fellow says to me, I, I'm not interested in surrendering at all. And I said, well, I sure am not either. And, uh, I arrived here in 1943, I joined immediately the guerrilla. And when the surrender took place, a bunch of us took off from there. Some of them were downstairs and walked across the mountains to the coast. Because we were already volunteer guards, we joined the guerrilla. Kang Leon also escaped in Butuan, and we organized this Leyte Area Command. I pinabalita po ng mga guerrilla sa Nueva Ecija, sa Bungabong Nueva Ecija, na ang aking kapatid ay nahulin na ngapon, kaya patay na siya. Sabi ko, wala na rin akong kapatid. Mamamatay rin ang hindi lumalaban. Pinipili ko na ang sumama sa inyo kung pwede. Limaw kaming batang-batang babaeng inyakyat sa second floor. Doon kami ginahasa. Pinagulit-ulit hanggang sa umumaga. Ang mga kasama namin, naririnig namin kung paano humihiyaw. Yung iba, sa, sa ano lang, doon lang sa bakuran ng bahay na pula, doon lang pinagsamantalahan. So we were not too surprised that Bataan had surrendered the day before. That time the squadron commander authorized those of us who wanted to, to try to escape. Uh, Captain Joe Barker, who was my troop commander and I, had already decided we were not going to surrender. Sa panahon pong iyon, ang kauna-una ang tinitingnan ng mga tao ay yung proteksyon ng kanyang sarili, ng pamilya. At sa totoo lang, nagiging sekundary lang ang inyong pangbayan. Sapagkat yung buhay mo muna ang nauuna at buhay ng pamilya mo. Sa ganito, nag-join na po ako. We did have the name of Hunter's Head during the time. We just uh, uh, group together and see how we can fight the Japanese on our own. When the forces in Panay surrendered, Colonel Peralta and some of the key officers told the American commanding officer that they considered the surrender orders as not applicable to the Filipinos. And we organized the guerrilla with uh, Colonel Naranjo, Lucas Naranjo, and Dr. Gernila. Because when uh, Captain Morgan and William Tate from the other side, from Lanao, came here one time, and they ransacked all the municipal treasurer in every town. We were afraid that they may come back again, so we had to organize our, uh, our uh, guerrilla. One of the reasons I think that the guerrilla started was their fear of the Moros who were going on a rampage. Nobody today seems to even remember about Bataan and Corregidor. They know Pearl Harbor. That lasted for about six hours. We fought for three months or four months in Bataan didn't have the faintest idea where the hell we're going, had no supplies particularly, had not much to take with us. We are not soldiers. I am not, I'm not ashamed to, to say this. I'm a student. My other companions are farmers in Batangas, in Cavite, uh, which haven't hold any gun, except when they went to the mountains. Well, after the surrender, Wainwright uh, went on the radio because uh, they knew there were a number of us that had not surrendered. And he said, all of you that don't surrender, I'm ordering you to surrender. Those of you that don't surrender can be treated by, as outlaws by the Japanese and executed. And uh, you will be disobeying orders and you will be outlawed and court-martialed. They had a death march up around Manila, uh, starting at Maravellas, uh, the Bataan Death March, and I believe everybody remembers that. But what they don't know is that at Lake Lanao, down on Mindanao, 
uh, they also had their own death march. It was July 4th, celebration of, you know, our independence. Many of, uh, of my companions died in, this, in the concentration camp in Malay Balang. Yeah. Many. Marami eh. Yung iba mga nauna sa akin eh, nakikita ko nakalutaw na sila sa mga tabing kanal na may kuwan. Na komo kami naman na eh, ayaw na ho, kahit nakikita na kami may mga bulok na ron, umiinom mo kami. Uh, started on the march with the Japanese and we went to, uh, we went about 80 miles because we went from Cab Cabin clear to Capas, but on the way the Japanese were terrible. They, they, they didn't feed us or give us anything to eat or water or anything like that. They got up to San Fernando and uh, they put us in cattle cars. And in the, uh, the car, small cattle cars, they would put just pack uh, 75 or 100 fellas in there and uh, and then uh, they packed them in there so tight that they couldn't, uh, uh, they, when they passed out, or when they died, they couldn't fall down. Di pala kami nadating sa mismo Odunel, marami nang namamatay. At sa karkula ko, alinsunod sa salis, sabi namin bago ako kami narilis, ay may git na 60,000 prisoner uh, na, ang namatay doon. Many of these boys were on their first enlistment and a lot of them really didn't even know where they were. And uh, they made a, a momentous decision in their life not to surrender because it was momentous in the fact that they didn't know what their status would be, whether they would be considered deserters or whether they would, uh, uh, where they were going, what they were going to live off of, who was going to look after them. And, but they made that decision not to surrender. We are using two kinds of guns. I still we master that Enfield and the Springfield. Those were gun, uh, rifles led by our soldiers and the, the Americans during that uh, death march. So with the arms and ammunition of General Castaneda and the rifle and pistol team of the Husserl College, we were to be able to bring and start up our armed uh, activities against the Japanese. Why not? What is it? 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 And I had more volunteers come to me when I started organizing, wanted to be guerrillas and I could use. Figured I needed about two men per gun. One to hold the gun and one to go back and farm. <laughs> the biggest uh, guerrilla organization in the Philippines was not operating. Well organized compared to this one here in Luzon or all this guerrilla resistance movement here. You cannot compare that with Perting. There's about 34,000 people, officers and listed men. It's not, it, it's not a, a matter of uh, uh, getting titles. It's a matter of uh, getting organized. That's why Walter coaching and the use of it are the fighting forces that done more harm against the Japanese. Oh. Si Ramsey ang area commander doon. Nako, ang 
protection ginawa namin sa kanya, terrible. You cannot go to, the, to his headquarters. Ay, if you're bagong mukha ka, pupunta ka ron, malilibing ka na ron, hindi ka na makakabalik ron. All espia na pinadala ni General Baba na hapon, wala, naubos dun. I, in the beginning, I was sending all of my intelligence via courier down to the Southern Islands to, to Ma, uh, Peralta, Mac Peralta, and also to Mindanao, and to Edwin Andrews in, in uh, Negros. It was a hide and seek, especially for me, because though I was not a foot soldier, I was, however, with the intelligence group. Uh, we had people who were inserted into the Japanese uh, uh, Kimpitai. I was able to organize about 60 people who were uh, all armed. On the first uh, attack we had, we almost annihilated the, the Japanese. We in the Cebu guerrillas have only an average of about 8,500. So we were outnumbered by about 6,000 men, but we were never outfought. About the second week of uh, September 1942, Colonel uh, James Cushing, no at that time, he was still a major, came to our camp in the Burubio camp, and he was trying to guerrilla us in Cebu to be united together with the command. And I believe Cushing was more Filipino than some of the Filipinos. He was quite a man, Cushing. And he led his people, I mean the soldiers under him. One day, the guard took his helmet off, and I split his head open with a shell. And I took his gun and took off. When I escaped, I had a pair of shorts on that I'd made out of a shirt, and it was short. It was short shorts. And no shoes, no other clothing, no underwear, no nothing. That was what I escaped in. After I got into prison camp, I could see that this wasn't going to work too well. And I was getting pretty fed up without getting slapped around on that stuff, usually. Uh, they had escaped. Uh, we carried out a gear during the week before and, and, and found a place we could hide it. And we found a, a clump place where we were hiding this stuff. And uh, you know where we, after we escaped, you know where we went? To the commanding officer's quarters. The Japanese. You know why? We felt that no goddamn dumb private could would come looking at the commanding officer's quarters to find out to escape prisoners. If four Americans escaped from the prisoner of war camp, and that would be Bill Norris, uh, Bill Johnson, um, Bob Ball, and uh, and Jimmy Smith, and they had they escaped on the 2nd of July, 1942, from the Don Solomon prison camp because they heard that they were going to have a death march. We escaped from that camp. There were four of us that escaped from that camp on the 1st of July uh, and went back up into the hills where we stayed for, oh, probably seven months or so and then finally came out and joined up with uh, a then Colonel Furtick who was forming a new organization, a guerrilla outfit. He was the first to bring out the government to the people. The war notes are made by him being authorized by President Quezon. If these uh, officials are doing that, they pattern it after Governor Abla. Idit sumalug dagidi ba dagidi ko hapon nag inikan da ida talaga nga aduda nga ng ng palto palto kada kuwada 
In early 1944, we joined Lieutenant Antonio Guillermo Aka Silver in Barrio Sangil, northern part of Bacara, and planted some explosives on the road. We were happy because we were able to cause some damage. Every Japanese soldier killed, uh, we have to rub them with their uh, belongings, personal belongings, for instance, uh, uh, wristwatches. So I had too many wristwatches. I got acquainted with Khalil Kador, whom I, he and I thought the same way. We figured that fighting was the only way to do it. So we decided we'd declare our own war. Part of our job, according to Commander Parsons, uh, he had already given this to Colonel Ferdig. Uh, we were to establish the uh, pre-war civilian government. We were to keep the Filipinos on the side of the Allies. Uh, we were to gather intelligence. Uh, we were to set up coast watcher stations. Our anger during that time was very... Yeah, we want to kill all jobs. Kasi ang tinitiyampuhan namin opisyal. Kasi po, pag nakatiyan po sa abin natin natin, official, di big time kayo, if you hit a Japanese officer, mas kita maa mo yan o masaktan, basta matawaan mo, importante, sikat ka sa bibot, sa mga guerrilla po doon. Eh di kaya kayo, iba mga hapo dito, kanilang ginapos, nilagay sa lagat, naghukay sila, iba naman, sinilaman nila, at nang makaganti na. Many were killed, many Japanese were killed, that's why they were angry, they were having this, who is the Kutsilio? They killed every civilian they sue. I'd been in several little scrapes before that. But from then on, every time I got a chance, I killed Japanese. We formed the Hope Balahap, and I was the one elected by all leaders to uh, organize a people's patriotic army, a people's army. So we fought like hell, the Japanese, night and day. There was a cargo ship, a transport ship of the Japanese that was sunk way near uh, Pagudpud between uh, Pasaling Bay and uh, Maraira. And uh, they swam ashore, but uh, they were all uh, ambushed by the group led by the officers like Guillermo, Reyes, Lugub, Torres, and Erikta. And uh, this was the group that took care of the Japanese that were coming down. They were met by the Bulu man around the shore, and they were cut one by one. Pero may mga gay, kaya ba't yung naglabahan namin talaga, hindi kinalabang ko nga po. At marreta nga, gakdakal ngam dati, tayo ikwa, at kural lang na sila sila luwak. Kaya kaya mga nagkakot, andak nga binungulan, hindi ka po. Eh, because of the, because you know why these people in our place got very angry. They massacred 65 women, burned alive by the Japanese. They were being called as guerrillian talahib o mga guerrillian takbuhin. But my father told me, do not be discouraged by what they are saying about us. Because sabi niya, guerrilla warfare is a different thing. We used to follow what Mao Zedong had done in China, sabi niya, during World War II. Mao Zedong says that he who fights and dies will never fight again. But he who fights and, and runs but will fight again for another day. No other guerrillas uh, fought like us. And we didn't, that is... Uh, that is perhaps what MacArthur did not like of us. We did not uh, obey his lie law policy. And they became a pretty powerful guerrilla organization. And yeah, we ended up having more fights with them than we did the Japs. The guerrillas units were very territorialized. Uh, Lapham had his territory, Anderson had his territory, Kabang Bang had his territory, and uh, Mark King had his territory. 
when we first banded together in Antipolo, the group of a king who tried to wear uniform as police officers during that time always belittled us. And they said, Oh, bata bata pa kayo, sino sasama sa inyo? Magluko-luko kayo. Yeah, at the start, there were different groups of uh, officers who were starting their own guerrilla band and scattered all over the island. I believe that uh, at that time, Bowler and Pindaton had the biggest guerrilla outfits. Maybe Pindaton was even bigger than Bowler's. When they found out what we, that we have plenty of arms as a result of our raid, they became friendly to us just to borrow some of the arms. When we were trying to get them back, they told us immediately, kung gusto nyo, sige, maglaban tayo, kunin nyo yung armas. Pero mas marami na matay ang mga markings kasi they don't know how. <laughs> Hindi katulad ng hunter, ang hunters marunong eh. They're all PMA year. PMA ang aming mga official dyan. At saka ROTC, a graduate. Fertig was really the guy that got them all together. In fact, to me, one of the big coups, if I'm not mistaken, if I recall correctly, was Uncle Chick convincing Pendaton, you know, to accept Fertig's command. Father Haggerty was also instrumental there. But the first thing we did, and I had about, back then maybe 15 or 20 men, was to decide we'd rid the countryside of these small bands. Either they'd join us or we'd get rid of them. At one time, McLeish sent Bill Norts up the Agusan River to arrest me. He was going to arrest me and court-martial me. And the Agusan River was my, my country. You don't send somebody into somebody else's country in that situation like that to arrest them. And Bill decided that it was a good idea if he didn't arrest me. Sad to say, uh, many of those who we fought against were uh, Filipinos. Eh. We called them the Pampars. You know. Have you heard about the Pilpilmi? Pilpilmi is a contraption of the word Pirpirmi, which, is, which means Kami Antonai, we are the, the, the real ones. But these were the factions uh, of the paramilitary or whatever, and they were quarreling between themselves. And so, in my hometown, the people were caught in between. They were the Filipinos murdering co-Filipinos. Why, why are these guerrillas killing Filipinos? Yeah, I do not know when they should be only one. In Lawag, uh, I know two groups, one under Lieutenant Jose Llanes and one under Captain Bueno. The Bueno group would uh, capture members of the Llanes group, and I, I was one of them, because uh, the Bueno group could not fight the 121st Infantry uh, Battalion under Doña and Oday, to which uh, Llanes joined later. They sought the help of the Japanese to fight the opposing uh, guerrilla group. Unlike telling the Japs where we were, they told us where these little bands were. So we'd wait till night, we'd go in, we'd wake them up, take their guns and say, now what do you want to do? Do you want to join us or do you want to get the hell out of here? <laughs> so many guerrilla outfit, you cannot blame them because there was difficulty of transportation, even communication, so you must be on your own. You know, this is Kudero unit and Lapus unit, we were uh, at odds. At that time, we have to uh, shoot each other. And the guerrillas had, uh, and especially in Luzon, they've been fighting each other more than they fight the Japanese. To get back to Pendaton and his crew, he had a Filipino mestizo, which is half one nationality and half uh, half Filipino. This guy's name was Andrews, Edwin Andrews. His father was an American GI. He was a, a first lieutenant in the Filipino Air Corps. 
joined Penn Dotton's force as a lieutenant colonel, and he introduced Andrews as his executive officer. And Andrews first remarked to us, I am a mestiza. My father was an American, my mother was a Filipino. And I am ashamed of the American blood that flows in my veins. I was going to kill him. Our people uh, complained that the supplies intended for us were blocked by the people of uh, Marking. So there were engagements, actually. You know? After the Battle of Uruan, we had run out of ammunition. And we learned that uh, there was a really quite a large stock of 30 caliber ammunition on the island of Moho. And Norts went up there in a launch and stole a lot of it. And I went up there after he did, and I stole some too. <laughs> and the Major Ed Hinero didn't like it. And he had threatened that he was going to shoot at any Americans approaching his island. When one of the first submarines come in, the Norwal, when it first, one of the first ones to come in, I and some of my men decided we needed the 20 millimeter deck gun they had. So while everybody else was busy, we stole it. It's nice to tell jokes and it's nice to play fun games, but if you get caught, you get killed. But we have a foolish Lieutenant Miranda organized also in Urmo. We fought each other. We were fighting and we had a competition also. Colonel Peralta, he was also a lieutenant, <laughs> you would remember. He pretended to be general in Panay. Valderian was uh, the foremost uh, guerrilla hero in uh, the island of uh, Leyte. He was the one who unified all the uh, guerrilla forces in the island of Leyte. In fact, he was the one who rescued Colonel Roberto Canglion from Butuan in Mindanao. I remember my father telling me that his parents were really murdered. So because they were not able to get to captured my father, they would offer rewards for those who would reveal the whereabouts of my father. So one, one resident who was supposed to be a relative of ours uh, turned traitor and betrayed and pinpointed the parents of my father. McClish, he was headquarters and we were regiments. I mean, he'd send us orders and if we felt like doing them, we'd do them. If we thought they were foolish, we wouldn't do them. The leader introduced himself as uh, Parking. Colonel Marking, I think it was. Right next to him or near him was Jai Pulio. Oh, she was with him. They were on their way to see Anderson. And at that time, uh, the British guerrilla forces, guerrilla units, were not really uh, in uh, talking terms. Uh, each guerrilla unit was a, a separate enclave. Uh, there was uh, Salipada Pindata no Mindanao, then uh, there was uh, Peralta of the Visayas, uh, Colonel Pertig, uh, uh, Colonel Absedi. And uh, you know, this is part of the nature maybe of uh, Filipinos, the ethnic uh, diversity, which would be uh, uh, inimical to the successful conduct of the war. They were guerrillas by list, by roster, but they didn't fight. When we learned that they have guns, sent by uh, up West Park to submarines. When we passed by, they were trying to ambush us. We put them in battle. We were able to kill some five or ten of them and got their guns. Volkman and I could never run a place together. It was either going to be him or me. The food shortage came because a lot of the Filipinos that used to do a lot of farming decided to become guerrillas. We would be up before dark, out on the earth, we get a, a little rice, big, full of rocks and worms, 
One time they had some, uh, looked like weeds in there. During the war, you know, uh, most of the battles last for about three to four days. During the first day, the volunteer guards are able to bring us food. But in the next days, they cannot go to the firing line anymore. So the common saying was one day, one eat, three days, no eat. <laughs> and in the no eat days, our stomachs grumble. And they were very happy though because for the first time in, the, in their lives, they were able to eat target corn beef. And my father almost cried when he tasted the ice cream inside the submarine, according to him. When the American landed in our place, it was a happy time because it's the first time I tasted chocolate. Big bars of chocolate, like ready mixed eggs, milk, butter. It's very nice. The taste of the chocolate, not even if I'm, I'm walking, not, that's more than around five kilometers from Pagod uh, Food to the town of Bangi. And you know, if I will not choose, if I will not choose the chocolate, I cannot, I cannot eat the chocolate in one uh, in that distance that I'm walking. It's hard chocolate, but very tastes good. They suffered hunger while they were waiting with the submarine. What they're eating is the coconut. That's the only available food there during those days. I was given the okay to send. Uh, as many as 20,000 car 